Hello, welcome to Amy Howard Home. My name is Christy Barron and I am coming to you from California. And I have a teaching studio where I teach art and um, home decor projects and anything creative and crafty. I enjoy bringing that to you and playing with new ideas and supplies that will bring more color and interest to your projects and so today i'm going to be working on this fun chair that i found in my friend's garage that she had originally wanted to come and have it redone so it's been a little bit sanded and you can see that it's got all this great texture and worn wood but it also has some little hints of green in it maybe it was green at one time i have no idea and so I'm gonna do a finish using this awesome crack gesso, which I really love because I really love texture. I think it looks amazing. I love how colors will peek through and pop. And so my plan is to do the crack gesso and then I'm going to take a couple of these colors from the milk paint line and I have picked out Central Park, which is um, a cooler gray color and this fun, my herb garden, which is a really dusty green color. So what we need to do first is clean off our chair. And so I'm gonna be using clean slate for that. And the other supplies that I have here are some spoons just to kind of scoop out my product and mix it up. I'm going to have these little old cups I've got. I've got a paintbrush for when I get to the milk paint part. Some little stirs. You could use whatever you have. And I've got some chippy brushes to apply my cracked gesso. So the first thing I want to do is to get a rag, a lint-free rag, and I'm just going to saturate it with this cleaner and I'm really just gonna rub it all over and that's gonna remove any oils and debris that might be still on the chair, like some dust, things like that. I'm just gonna twist it around these spindles and it will kind of give us a nice fresh clean surface for our gesso to adhere to. Getting all in here. Just in these little... And my thoughts are, I'm not going to do, you know, I actually like the hints of green and the texture of this wood. So I'm not going to be doing super thick coats. I just kind of want to give it a little bit of color and life and extra texture that's going to accent this chair. And so with the gesso, it's one part gesso to one part water. And so it comes in this little bag. Just need one of these little cups. And I am just going to start out by putting a couple spoonfuls in there. I might need more, but I'd rather make less and have to add to it than make too much and waste it. So I'm going to put some drizzles of water in there. And I'm just going to get this nice and mixed. What are your favorite things? Have you used cracked gesso before? If so, tell me what you've used it for. I always love to hear other people's fun ideas or the milk paint 
What's your favorite color? They're all so beautiful. And um, just these amazing colors that she has put together. I need another little scoop. I was a little bit generous on the water. So I have that all mixed up and I'm going to use my favorite, these old chippy brushes to apply some of this. And as you can see, I've just got some, I have got some paper on my surface because I don't know about you, but I am a messy art and craft gal. If I'm not making a mess, I'm I don't I'm not I don't know what's going on. I like to get really into my projects. I don't like to worry about my surfaces when I'm I'm just kind of smushing it in those nooks and crannies a little bit. Getting in these little diamonds. I'm going to speed it up here for you so you don't have to watch me doing these two coats. Welcome back. So we've let this gesso dry, two coats of the cracked gesso, not super thick, just enough. And we're going to now give it a quick sand, just with a fine grit sandpaper. And that's just to kind of smooth out that texture just a little bit. And I'm just using an 800 because what I had, but I like 800 because it gives a very nice smooth finish and it's perfect. It's just so soft enough that you don't need anything really harsh at all. So we're just going to do that all over really quickly. Getting the technique we want. So I'm going to mix up my milk paint. So if you've never used milk paint before, it is a powder and you're gonna mix it quite like we did the gesso one part powder of whatever color you're choosing and one part water oops see I'm such a mess Oh well, then I'm just going to kind of come in here and give us some water, give it a good stir. Look at that beautiful green and the gray we have a splash so giving it a good stir and then this is the central park and then here I have mixed up my 
my Central Park Gray, which has some blue hue in it. And with the milk paint, you just want one scoop of the powder to equal parts water. So I don't like to mix up too much because it's, you know, you can't, it's not as easy to save. It's a milk-based paint and so it doesn't love to keep. So I just mix up, it's so easy to mix up, I just mix up a little bit. And then I've done the same thing with my green here, which is my herb garden, okay? And then I have my nice big brush. And what I'm gonna do is I am just going to start bringing that green in. Not a ton, you're gonna notice your brush, your, your chair, or whatever piece of furniture has been gessoed. The gesso is pretty thirsty. And remember, I'm gonna do both these colors, so I'm kind of just putting it around, nothing perfect. Letting my brush catch where it wants to. I want it, I'm going for that look that, you know, this chair might have been painted by many generations and it has seen the use of time and everybody's colors are kind of peeking through one another. And so each of those colors might tell a little story about what they might have used, what their decor may have looked like. You can see this is a pretty quick process. I don't want it to be very thick. I want to see those chippy layers. And then we're gonna come in with that, that central part gray. And a little bit more of a neutral, but still gonna see all this gorgeous green in here. And as this paint dries, you're gonna notice that um, your gesso is getting all the excess green off. I don't wanna totally remove it. I want them to blend a little bit, but is gonna start, that gesso is going to start to crack some. And the green and this grayish blue are starting to blend a little bit and giving us like a deep turquoise, which for me, that's my favorite. Anybody that knows me knows I tend to lean towards blues and greens, especially when they're together. I'm going to make a little more. I'm going over a little bit more with this Central Park because I want it to be more of this color than the green. I'm even not minding that some of that white is showing through.
Okay, so now I just wanted to show you the chippy texture that's happening. You can see some of the cracked gesso coming up a little bit. And it does have like a little bit of grit to it. And that's partly because I didn't mix the milk paint the day before, but I don't, I don't mind that. So what I'm going to be doing now is taking some sandpaper and I'm going to go over my whole piece just slightly, just enough to get rid of that grit and any substantial texture and smooth it out. Okay, it's all sanded just lightly, and you can see how it got a little more chippy. Look at all that goodness. I love a good chippy piece. And so I just sanded it with about a 200. Um, it really doesn't matter too much. You just don't want something too scratchy. And... You don't want to be taking the paint off. This milk paint will naturally do this. And now I am going to okay, seal so it. we've painted our piece with cracked gesso. We went over it with two different colors of milk paint, a green and a gray. And then I let it dry for a day or so. And so now we have just sanded it. I cleaned it off. So how I cleaned it off was I actually took a vacuum really quick and got the the dust off of it because the, when you sand the milk paint, it is kind of dusty. And then I just wiped it down with a clean rag and now we are going to seal it. And this is one of my favorite wax sealers, this Mind Your Own Beeswax. It is a fantastic sealer and it is something, I just use a clean cloth even though it's kind of been used and loved on. I got a fresh one from the wash and I'm just gonna put a dollop on my rag and start blending it in. And you're gonna see that where you touch it, it is going to soak it right up. Because that paint is still dry and thirsty. Just the nature of the milk paint. So it's easy to tell where you have been are ready with your rag and I'm just spreading that out. All over my piece and you might still get some dust on your rag and that is totally okay. I like a rag that I can move my fingers in between these spindles, get in all those little nooks and crannies. And when it stops being coming dark, when you touch it, you need to load up your rag a little bit. Don't freak out about the dark color. It again is going to lighten up some as it dries. You don't want a thick coat. You just want a nice thin coat. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of the piece and then come back and show this all covered up with my beeswax and I'm going to let it dry overnight and then I'm going to give it a good buff with another clean cloth and I will drop some pictures for you so you can see exactly how amazing it looks after all of this fun but easy work to transform this chair. Thanks for joining us and we will see you soon on Amy Howard Home. Bye.